Hello everyone, it's DuckFerry07. Today I'm playing Bristly Bill in Series Roots Brew. Okay, so the Bristly Bill is a very powerful threat in this build. So uh, if you have a delighted halfling on the field, you can play Bristly Bill on turn 2 and play the fetch, put two counters on it. It's already a 4 4. Then play another of one, uh, one of your one drops. And on the turn 3, you can play another fetch, making it a 6 6. It can be really, really a powerful, strong attacker but also it's a great Agatha Soul Cauldron uh, enabler so it, it puts counters on your creatures uh, but it can get really crazy if you have Grist under the Cauldron or Postboard when you have Fulminator okay also uh, getting extra mana with Halfling under the Cauldron stuff like that uh, okay, so uh, initially in I had walking ballistas in this build, but uh, decided it was the weakest link uh, in the deck despite uh, some good interaction with uh, Bristly Bill putting counters on creatures, letting you ping for a lot of damage, stuff like that. Bristly Bill also has another ability which uh, proved to be very useful in this deck, especially uh, with uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron. Okay, so it has a 5 mana, double the number of plus 1 counters on each creature you control. This can get very, really crazy if you, have, if you have Insidious Roots, tokens on the field. Okay, so the important thing to notice here is that Bristly Bill is a plant. The creature type is plant. And Insidious Roots puts counters on all plant types creatures okay so uh, actually when you trigger the insidious roots insidious roots is putting a counter counter on your bristly build making it even larger and stronger threat in this build and also like a gata soul cauldron uh, can sometimes use this ability to be relevant okay also the grist the hunger tide uh, is uh, the, if you have the little halfling you can play it as early as turn two and it can make a lot of tokens and insidious roots um uh, gives ability to your tokens to produce mana which can also be relevant uh, when you have a grave crawler in the graveyard and carry on feeder you can just play a uh, grave crawler bunch of times okay so if you're not uh, already uh, uh, familiar with this uh, Tyvar the jubilant brawler goes infinite with the carry on feeder and grave crawler if you have insidious roots on the field you just play the grave crawler from the graveyard uh, you get the token uh, use a sec grave crawler and you can use uh, the plant token immediately to produce mana so you play grave crawler again and produce infinite uh, plant tokens so um, uh, you go infinite with tokens but you mostly uh, win uh, next turn or you win immediately if you have a carry on feeder gris uh, or sorry bristly bill or plant tokens already on the field able to attack so you just attack for uh, infinite uh, if if they can block your creatures, of course. Uh, this can also get crazy post board with Fulminator Mage, uh, the Insidious Roots, the Bristly Bill making counters on your creatures. You can sack a lot of creatures, destroying a lot of lands in matchups where it's useful. A very clean sideboard, 4 Fatal Push, 4 Pick Your Poison, 4 Fulminator, 3 Nickel Spell Bombs, that's it. I'm very happy with this build. I think it covers all the relevant uh, matchups at the moment. The most relevant matchups. Okay, so uh, we got Bloodgusts, we got Grey Crawlers. Uh, this trigger is used to trigger Insidious Roots uh, very well. Also, Gata Soul Caldron triggers Roots, and also Tyvar uh, with its minus ability triggers the Roots. But one of the most important cards in this build is Souls of the Lost. Souls of the Lost is really, really strong here. Uh, you use it to discard Bloodgast, discard the Grave Crawler, which can trigger the roots later. Uh, you uh, sac use it to sacrifice uh, Stitcher suppliers. Um, it's a just very powerful piece, and it it will always be very, very large attacker in this build. Unfortunately, uh, in this build, I don't have Wonder in the main. Uh, like in Sultai Crabwine, where it's able to give the souls flying, but it's still a very, very uh, powerful threat in this build, and uh, it works well with the rest of the deck. It's just a very, very strong two mana threat uh, in this build. Okay, so uh, that is it. Um, uh, okay, I also want to mention uh, one more thing. Uh, you, I, I'm very happy with the mana base, three swamps. 
three shocks, one survey land and one witch cottage. Uh, which one of witch cottage has been like crazy, crazy good in this build. Often you uh, top deck a land when you have three lands on the field and often you have insidious roots somewhere and blood gas in the yard and you top deck land you play land get blood gust, get the insidious roots token and then when your opponent doesn't expect it you fetch get the witch cottage and put uh, another token in and put counter on all your plants this was very very relevant in a crazy amount of situations pretty pretty happy with this one off it's just crazy crazy good and it's another way to trigger the roots i think it's very important piece in the roots deck if you can afford to play it it's like just really really good okay so uh, that's it let's go before the gameplay uh, if you want to support my channel and if you're looking for a cool uh, token solutions for your paper collections uh, you can use the code um, use the link uh, from my video description to uh, check out the cardelk.com uh, by purchasing there you're supporting my content if you use my link it's a cool token solution for your paper collection uh, you can read more about it here and uh, using the link down below in the video description and uh, yeah, that's it uh, let's go check out the gameplay okay so match one I'm playing first. A uh, pretty decent hand. Okay, so uh, I have a lot of uh, three good three drops plans walkers that work well with the halfling, and the halfling uh, has been very very um, good in this deck, enabling you to um, giving uncounterable to the grist, to the tyvar, to the. Uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron. Of course, uh, you can't really use it well with uh, roots and grave in your uh, black one drops, but it's still a pretty decent card in this deck. I really liked it and I uh, definitely opted to go with four. Uh, in the end, as I said, initially I didn't have halflings in. I had uh, ballistas and uh, one more bloodgust and one more blister build, but yeah, I'm very happy with this. Okay, so uh, I was obviously playing against uh, like f five color deck that plays fire eyes and that is like most chances for it, it is like uh, rhinos and they didn't play rhinos on turn three and here I was able to start producing uh, insidious roots and I have a grey crawler, I have blood gust, I have land in my hand so uh, if I draw carry on feeder or if I draw the tyvar it can get really crazy, but yeah, here uh, it looks like my opponent is not playing, um, not playing uh, rhinos, but they're playing uh, five, uh, four color omnat pile. That's even better. Okay, so here I was able to play the witch cottage, put carrion feeder on top, put counters on my plant tokens, and carrion feeder was exactly card I needed. So having carrion feeder on top is just uh, extremely extremely good top deck and i was able to finish things up uh, here immediately uh, with the uh, witch cottage triggering double roots and uh, that was the game and yeah that was lethal damage so let's check out game two okay pretty pretty easy game opponent didn't do much they just played omnat and eldramid for elish i guess elish never did anything in that game so it wasn't a great decision okay so here i brought in the fulminators i brought in uh, the pick your poisons so i think yeah fulminator is decent against them and pick your poison skill the leyline bindings and one rings i'm not sure what what exactly did my opponent play because they had fire ice in but okay yeah i played souls of the lost here very good threat opponent uses this turn and just he, he was like mana screwed so they just use this turn to play the binding i was able to play the fulminator this turn decided to cut them from a uh, sacred foundry and now i have multiple options i decide to go for the tiver and uh, bring back the bill putting counter on the bill putting another one 
and putting Fulminator on the top. Next turn I can play Fulminator, kill their land plus play the souls which is like pretty good threat right now and also like the Bristly Bill is uh, pretty strong already 4-4 next turn would be a 5-5 five, five. that's that's like pretty good okay so i destroy their land play the souls of the lost as 11-12 attacker for the next turn and yeah uh, i top deck the grist and my opponent decides that's enough and they concede so let's check out match two Okay, so uh, we are going to go through the wins first and of course uh, defeat uh, in the uh, defeat last, like usually I do. Okay, so here uh, it's a decent hand, nothing special. I can start with the Stitcher Supplier. Uh, milling over a Grave Crawler is decent in a situation like this where I have a uh, Carrion Feeder in hand. Okay, opponent uh, starts off with a uh, Hallowed Fountain, uh, passes the turn, they uh, revealed Kahira, so uh, the chances are uh, good that uh, they are just playing the blue-white control, of course with the Binding Splash. Here I go uh, for the Gravecrawler, play the Carrion Feeder, and yeah, just start uh, attacking with my small zombies here, it's uh, kind of hard for a blue-white control to play against stuff like Gravecrawler and uh, yeah luckily they uh, subtleted my carry-on feeder so they were able to use the prismatic ending otherwise it would be kind of useless okay so here I play the Agatha Soul Cauldron put counter on my supplier continue attacking and yeah, a timer would be a better play here unfortunately I didn't uh, uh, draw a land. Uh, you can see that Carrion Feeder was a uh, pretty good piece here because uh, they would not be able to use their exile effects so I would get more value from my supplier and the grave crawler. But uh, this is fine. I played Tyler. Unfortunately I didn't hit uh, what I wanted. What I wanted was like Bill or um, Souls of the Lost. But uh, Delighted Halfling is also pretty decent against uh, against a control deck so I guess that's fine I go for a halfling here and decide to play the second tiver trying to mill something relevant and I get the grist in the graveyard which was great so I was able to produce a uh, insect token uh, so I'm pretty happy with this having grist uh, under the cauldron here but my opponent uses supreme verdict that is uh, actually not a big deal. I still have Tyver on the field, and uh, I can I play the Bloodgust. I do the I do this thing again. Play a fetch, bring back another Bloodgust. I milled over. I have double a uh, Grave Crawler in the field if I ever draw the zombie. So it's a it's a pretty pretty decent situation. Okay, so here I go for the Grave Crawler and then replay the two remaining Grave Crawlers. Uh, I go for another Agatha Cauldron ability, uh, doing more of these uh, Grist abilities, milling my graveyard, giving me additional uh, tools to uh, use the Agatha Soul Cauldron on. Opponent uses another Supreme Verdict. Okay, opponent bounces my Agatha Soul Cauldron, so unfortunately I lost a Grist. I had the Grist below it, now I don't have it anymore, I have to find another Grist. But uh, I was able to bring back uh, Bloodgusts, I do the Surveil ability, end of their turn, I still have Agatha Soul Cauldron in my hand, so it's pretty decent situation, and Tyver on the field also, so can't complain about that. Okay, so let's go with the attack first, so I decide to play the Souls first, this way. I could have of course sacked the Bloodgust, but I don't really need the fourth land, so I decided just to sack that. And my opponent, I decide to play Souls first, this way if they subtlety me, I can still put Souls on the top and uh, put it back into the play. Also I get to resolve the Agatha Soul Cauldron uh, to put cre uh, counters on my creatures. The only thing I would ever need more mana for it would be like the Bristly Bill ability. 
Uh, opponent gets to resolve the one ring and gets the protection for the next turn but I still can make a pretty strong um, board presence here okay so I go for the grist uh, if they counter the grist it's totally fine I, I just exile it with Agatha Soul Cauldron so I don't really care about that opponent decides to go for the counter spell so I was able to put another counter at Bloodgust uh, make more uh, of these uh, insect tokens and uh, just uh, pass the turn opponent is now on nine they find minimo uh, untap the wandering draw a bunch of cards and use the supreme verdict again uh, yeah this is a weird situation i have a lot of good top decks i find insidious roots here um, but opponent has a counter spell so uh, it it was it was very close, but opponent was able to find a uh, lot of a good um, lot of good top decks there. Uh, now they uh, exile my uh, exile my Agatha too, and uh, I it was uh, it was uh, enough for me. They had seven cards in their hand, probably a bunch of ways out of this. So I concede. Let's check out the game two. Okay, for the control matchup, um, I uh, definitely wanted to use the Pick Your Poisons, again kill their rings. Uh, I keep uh, Pick Your Poison on top, I think it's always a good card against them. And yeah, okay, so um, I play the Bristly Bill here. They have to uh, kill this guy, it will get a lot bigger if they don't. And uh, if they don't, it's uh, like pr that's pretty good news for me. So, um, here I played the Bloodgust first, it, there's just no point in uh, countering the Bloodgust. I put another counter on the bill, attack for a 4 here, that is a lot of damage. And 6 damage going for the next turn, opponent doesn't seem to have a removal here, which seems strange. Okay, so I'm putting, uh, putting a counter here on the Bloodgust, to not go all in on Bill if they kill it. Okay, so here I go for another land to put another counter and uh, target Bill this time. So I go in for 8, which means I have like lethal next turn. So I didn't want to play Grist into counter spell. Figure they have to like uh, go uh, for one, 4 mana spell next turn, either Verdict or the Wandering. So I just saved uh, the Grist for uh, this turn. This, this was luckily a good decision. And I also used the Witch Cottage to put a Bill on top. Bill still, still can be relevant next turn, putting counters on the insect token, uh, instant speed, going in for more damage, also like just, they have to get rid of this Grist or the Grist is going to kill them, being such a so low on life and my deck being like all creatures. Okay, so yeah, here it is, ending on Grist. It's still fine, there are three cards on top, I have pick your poisons to deal with their stuff. And here I go for the Bristly Bill, unfortunately they have uh, Stern Scalding using their 1 mana, very nice there. Attacking putting down on 6 and yeah. Okay, now I'm uh, out of gas, but so is my opponent. They just putting Kahira to hand, playing another land. Here I find Insidious Roots, unfortunately like um, no resources at this point, uh, opponent uh, had a bunch of stuff there to prevent me from um, getting the value from this. So, Insidious Roots not doing much at the moment, but it is a powerful card. If it stays on the field for a lot of turns, it will certainly do uh, uh, some job. Okay, so, here opponent goes for, uh, I draw, sorry, I draw Cauldron here, and uh, Cauldron is obviously great with roots, a lot of cards in this deck that synergize well, so opponent really has to uh, deal with roots. I was able to kill the binding immediately, uh, trigger roots uh, by uh, my Cauldron, and now it's a uh, it's pretty decent situation for me. I can 
I start attacking here. Again, opponent decides to trade with, with Kahira. This is decent news for me. Uh, I can uh, next turn exile the Bristly Bill, put uh, counters, uh, getting the ability to put counters on my um, creatures, double the number, which works, as I said, works great with Insidious Roots. Yeah, it's just really, really good. Okay, so uh, here I draw into Tyvar, Tyvar, great top deck here. I mill and uh, bring back Souls of the Lost, getting the plant token, now getting the bill too. And yeah, all my creatures have haste, so I can use the ability immediately, double all the counters, and it's a, it's a lot of counters, it can even get crazier on the following turn. Yeah, so um, every creature here is doing lethal damage next turn. So opponent finds the one ring to survive another turn and they also have a celestial purge. So opponent still in the game, but yeah, I have a lot of uh, good stuff here. And here I find a fulminator from the sideboard. Yeah, a fulminator is pretty good here. Unfortunately, opponent has uh, stern scolding, but that's not a big deal considering I have um, I have Agatha. But since uh, since I ha since every creature on the field is doing lethal damage next turn, I decide not to attack their uh, their lands. Opponent, uh, go they only had two cards in hand. And but they went Narset and Supreme Verdict. I think I think that's fine. I just in response I kill three of their four of their lands, leaving them with just three lands, and I still have Roots and Cauldron. And here I accidentally misclick, almost ruining my game. I accidentally misclick, um, like killing my uh, soul. I think it was a double misclick. I accidentally kill my Agatha Soul Cauldron and uh, lost the grist i had underneath and also fulminator which like just nearly nearly costed me the game but luckily it didn't uh, matter and i was able to win anyway um uh, across a uh, few turns uh, the agatha uh, uh, my opponent was on one and uh, i killed a lot of the lot of the important lands from their mana base okay uh, so i go for the grist here grist is a great threat opponent kills my plant token opponent kills my uh, plant token but ultimately grist here is just going to easily win this game uh, making an uh, insect token each turn even if they kill it Somehow I, I can still use Agatha Soul Cauldron to bring it back and that's it. Okay, so Opponent uh, has a uh, subtlety here, but yeah, I was able to uh, trade with subtlety in this situation uh, Make another uh, insect an opponent decides to concede so I was able to win somehow despite the misclicking Okay, so let's check out game three. Both players like really low on time. Uh, but I'm in small advantage because I'm not playing a control deck. I have faster kills than my opponent. Okay, so uh, I uh, surveil a souls to the graveyard. In this situation, souls is like medium. Uh, I have enough uh, threats. I'm looking for a third land from the top. That's why I just graveyard the souls. Although it's one of the best cards in the deck. I was really looking to find that additional land. And now I can play uh, Bristly Bill on turn 2. Bristly Bill is a great threat. They have to answer it. And they find the stern scolding here. If they don't, next turn I'm putting counters on creatures. It's, it, it can get really big really fast. Okay, so uh, on my turn, on my turn, I go for the Fulminator, start attacking the lands. Next turn, I can go for the 
Fulminator again, depending on what they play, but uh, I go for uh, Supplier first, then triggering, triggering the Bloodgust, uh, and then uh, killing the Narset with the Grist, to make sure they don't play something like these Undoing or whatever. Uh, I was able to kill uh, the One Ring, kill another of their lands, and uh, just uh, continue making a uh, grist uh, value. Opponent uh, run, running out of lands, uh, I um, try to put, play souls, but opponent has a spell snare and uh, they play find another land, play the fairy, but it's still pretty decent situation for me. Uh, just making more uh, grist tokens and uh, playing Tavar, bringing back souls of the lost. Souls of the lost is like must answer threat in this deck it's 17 18 right now so just a single attack um, wins the game i have double plans walker uh, on the field it's it's just amazing uh, getting a blood gust best back uh, great great value even uh, with their verdicts uh, they don't do much against creatures like gray crawler blood gust i rebuild my board state really fast and the plans walkers also uh, help uh, do you do it. Uh, Delighted Halfling uh, works great also with them. So yeah, pretty big advantage here. Uh, I go for another Grist uh, from my hand. Uh, continue grinding, uh, plusing my uh, Tiver, plusing uh, the Grist. Uh, just keep attacking and yeah, my opponent is in a really bad situation. Even if they have the One Ring and the Verdict or whatever. It's still, um, I'm still like doing really good here. So I go for a Tyver minus ability, putting some counters on my creatures, um, passing the turn. Next turn I have Grist ultimate and uh, I have 14 uh, creatures in the yard, which is like definitely a lethal. Opponent plays another one ring, but doesn't find a solution for Grist. So I just end the match with the Grist here and that is it. Okay, so let's check out uh, match 3. Okay, so I played 3 leagues uh, with this build. Uh, first 2 leagues I played with a slightly different build where I didn't have Halflings in, but Ballistas and um, uh, Fort Bill, Fort uh, uh, Bloodgust. But uh, I really liked the Halflings and I'm really, really 100% uh, sure to go with the four Halflings uh, here. Okay, my opponent played four, five color Rhinos. I had multiple options here, but uh, I decided just to go for turn two Grist and uh, start plusing the Grist, uh, hopefully uh, getting some stuff in the yard. Like Bloodgust, uh, Grey Crawlers, which can trigger the roots. Okay, so next turn I can play Souls of the Lost, discard the Grave Crawler, play the Carrion Feeder, which means turn after I can start uh, triggering the Insidious Roots with the Grave Crawler. That is really good. Okay, so they subtlety my Souls of the Lost. I definitely want that card, so I put it on top. It's one of the strongest card. Strongest card. I play the Carrion Feeder. Carrion Feeder is also like a pretty decent threat against a lot of decks, and it's useful against decks like, like I played before, when you can sacrifice your um, graveyard creatures like Bloodgusts, uh, Grave Crawlers, uh, to avoid the exile effects. And it can also just get very big. This deck goes wide with Grist, with Insidious Roots. You can sack a bunch of creatures, make it really, really um, uh, unkillable with damage effects. Okay, so I play the Roots uh, here. Resolve the Roots, uh, go for the attack. Opponent doing the surveilling thing. And yeah, they can't kill the Carrion Feeder here with uh, the damage effects. They don't have Binding and uh, I, I had option to go for the Grave Crawler, but I decided I want to play Souls of the Lost, but like both plays are really, really good here. And there's just no bad play uh, in this moment. Opponent didn't even have the Cascade spell in this game. They just played like the Questing Beast. 
and uh, suspended the footfalls so not uh, not a, not a strong uh, hand for the opponent here i uh, uh, killed the questing beast with my uh, grist so i can um, so i can attack with uh, the souls and i can now like use the mana from insect tokens to replay the grave crawler replay the crawler, grave crawler a bunch of times make huge plant tokens that are bigger than their uh, uh, rhinos so yeah just plus souls of the lost is like really good against them so it's definitely definitely game over and let's check out game two and also the sideboarding plan for this matchup of course i want the pick your poisons uh, you can see that pick your poison is like definitely the most boarded card i bought it so much that um, I could just play it in the main uh, but yeah uh, I it didn't even use the Havar Mites I think like 4 pick your poisons I prefer having other stuff uh, on the graveyard like Fulmin 4 Fulminator, 4 push, 4 pick your poison, 3 Nihil Spellbomb just very clean, very useful cards and yeah here opponent uh, goes for the Leyland Binding, takes my Halfling uh, yeah, I think Halfling plays great uh, because uh, I have a lot of um, legendary cards in this deck. Like I have uh, three Tivers, four Grists, uh, three Bills, three Agatha Soul Cauldron. That is a lot. Uh, also, it plays uh, great with Bristly Bill. So you can uh, turn two, play the Bill, and then play the Fetch and start getting those counters immediately. And. All of that, I've been impressed uh, with, uh, with it and I decided just definitely go uh, with that. Okay, so here I play the Pick Your Poison, kill the Sino Draco, continue attacking with Souls of the Lost. My opponent only has one card in their hand and the Footfalls on the Suspend. And I have Soul Cauldron plus Insidious Roots on the field, which is obviously great. Okay, so here uh, I decide to go for the Fulminator kill their uh, Xander's Lounge, uh, continue attacking with the Souls of the Lost, putting my opponent down on 9. But yeah, here, uh, now they resolve Rhinos. And uh, the race is on. Okay, so... Maybe... Yeah, did I, ha I didn't have... Unfortunately, didn't have Witch Cottage in my deck. I milled it over. Yeah, maybe uh, the Witch Cottage would be pretty decent. Yeah, uh, they go attack with everything, and I have uh, I have seven damage here. Unfortunately, not enough. If I had uh, if I top deck a Stitcher Supplier, it would be a lethal. So it was a good gamble, but uh, opponent succeeds to tempo me out in this game. So let's check out game two. I boarded in only two uh, Fulminators in this matchup. Fulminator can be great against them, um, attacking their uh, five uh, color uh, mana base, of course. But I also just don't want four of them, especially uh, on the draw. So I think uh, I, I like having two of them. I kept a uh, halfling here, pretty happy with that. Um, so I have plenty of options here. I think best is just try to resolve the roots and next uh, next turn go play the supplier. Then if maybe I tr find a uh, grave crawler or bloodgust, then play a land, try to trigger the roots, then play the tiver again, trigger the roots using tiver. That's like really good. And start, start getting the Insidious Roots, uh, of course, um, uh, value here, and the Tyvar, of course. I already have Bill in the yard, uh, looking to find something even better, but uh, here it is. Bill plus Roots, and Roots putting counter on Bill, making your Bill a really, really strong threat in situations like this. So now every land uh, puts counters on your creatures, every uh, Root ability putting counters on your Bill. They can fa very fast grow, uh, very large, larger than the Rhino tokens. And it is definitely a problem for the opponent. Okay, so here I go for the supplier, finding the Grey Crawler, triggering roots again, also triggering uh, Bill. 
Okay, so here uh, is another example of me taking 5 mana and doubling all uh, the counters on all creatures I control. This includes plant tokens and the bill and yeah. Okay, so here I go for the Grist, I kill one of the Rhino tokens and uh, I have Roots on the field, uh, kill their Binding and untap my uh, Plant tokens, so I have, I have, I am attacking with Gravecrawler, I have a double way of uh, blocking their uh, Rhino if they go for the attack. Opponent has a Footfalls on Suspend, but uh, my situation is pretty good, they go for Arden Playa and then cascade into cursed totem which uh, was pretty weird uh, uh yeah i don't know like pretty weird choice of by the opponent uh i go for uh, another tyver ability uh triggering another um insidious roots and playing then playing grave crawler from the graveyard i can't i had a lethal this turn but i actually was not able to use uh, my creature's ability, so I was not able to use the Bristly Bill ability to exile, um, to double the counters on my creatures. Okay, so uh, I go for the Grist ability, killing the Rhino token and uh, putting uh, counters on my plants, uh, which give me uh, like a really strong attack here, definitely for the lethal damage, and that is a match. Okay, so let's check out uh, match four. Okay, so in the match 4, uh, keeping a kind of a weird hand, uh, triple roots, uh, triple uh, double souls, but not really uh, have any enablers for both of these cards in my starting hand, but decide to risk it, just keep it. A few good draws like a Bloodgust from the top can like be really good. Okay, so I discard a Bloodgust here. Definitely then uh, land from the top, giving me option to go roots. Okay, so I, I was able to maybe just go for the another souls here and at attack for four. But I wanted to uh, use the roots ability and bring back Bloodgust before they exile it with Kavu. Okay, so uh, I play uh, Bill plus uh, Souls here, putting two strong creatures on the field. Uh, opponent finds the land to make Kao a 5-5, which gives them a good attack here. Bolt the Bill, pass the turn. I play the Supplier, making my uh, Souls like really, really large, uh, then staying back with two Chump blockers. Uh, I really, really gladly just Chump with... Uh, Stitcher supplier there. Unfortunately, this means that uh, I'm not uh, I'm not getting uh, I don't have zombie to replay the grave crawler, but um, Yeah, opponent goes for a binding here tries to block the plant token But they don't know that I have which cottage here which cottage uh, putting souls on the top triggering plant uh, triggering roots uh, two times this which one of which cutters is ju just insane in the roots build. I would never, never again play the roots deck without uh, at least one witch cottage. It's just very, really strong. Okay, so here it is. Um, uh, easy win, getting easy win there thanks to the double roots, uh, keeping awkward card in the beginning, but in the end the double roots just easily won this one. Okay, so uh, again, I really, really, uh, once again, just want these pick your poisons in the main, just best card in the sideboard by far. And again, uh, you can see me um, boarding in two Fulminators Mage. I think just having two post board feels perfect, pretty happy with that. And uh, yeah, here I start off with uh, Supplier. I have double pick your poison. I didn't want to use them on Leyline. I only want to use them on the Scion. Just saving it for the Scion. Opponent also just Mulligan hard, probably to get the Scion thing. 
and I was able to kill the Scion with the Pick Your Poison and uh, opponent maybe was unhappy with their draws or whatever and they just decides to concede immediately that was the match okay so let's check out the last match of this league uh, the only one uh, the only loss in this league let's see how that went uh, I kept pretty pretty strong hand one of the best hands and also playing first um, so Opponent uh, starts with Havar Might, unfortunately. Havar Might was uh, pretty good there. I think. Yeah, I didn't play Tyver here because then uh, I'm tapped out and then my Tyver just dies to, um, to attack from Havar Might, so that was awkward. Uh, also, like, they randomly have a turn 1 Havar Might to kill my roots was also like pretty weird but it is what it is okay so here i um i was hoping to find uh, either like souls of the lost would be perfect or bill uh, i'd only find a carrion feeder which is again uh, cool because i have grave coral in the yard but also i have another carrion feeder in my hand so it's like medium opponent uh goes for um I, I was not able to kill uh, the Grist here, unfortunately. I put it uh, on down on one, and uh, plus my Tyver. Okay, so here opponent was able to play the Yagmoth, and uh, I really need my Grist to kill uh, the Yagmoth, or at least like uh, Agatha Soul Cauldron. And uh, I was able to build a large board state, pretty decent but uh, that's not enough I kill uh, uh, I was uh, wanted to kill the Grist uh, definitely maybe I should have uh, sacked this carrion feeder immediately when they targeted it with Yagmoth to draw more cards but yeah opponent has Yagmoth on the field I did not find the Cauldron or the Grist, I was looking for those two cards that are really really like the two most important cards in this matchup and uh, Souls of the Lost is just not uh, that good here like in other matchups because they can just chump it infinitely with uh, this Young Wolf and I have a lot of attackers and really really strong board state but without Grist and Cauldron in the field that's just not uh, not enough Okay, so I can sizzle their uh, Yagmoth abilities by uh, sacking the creatures. And uh, yeah, but they find Scavenging Goose here. Scavenging Goose like, was so good for them in this matchup. Exiling my Grave Crawlers, Bloodgust from the yard. And yeah, gaining them life, which was like really, really important in this matchup and yeah next turn they had enough life to um, do the combo stuff and the combo kill me so that was the game let's check out game two and also the sideboarding plan in this matchup sideboard is like really really simple in this one so i don't want to pick your poisons and fulminators but i want fatal pushes and nihil spell bombs in this one so okay so again um I have option to play Bill, start putting counters on it, making it really big attacker. Again, if I play the Tyvar, they just kill it with their 1-1, one, one. so I, I prefer just not doing that, but playing Tyvar on later turn. I could also go just uh, Insidious Roots, of course, then go for um, Tyvar on the next turn, but I think like Bristly Bill was probably the best uh, solution here. I play uh, Bill, I play the Souls of the Lost, attacking for 5, I have another 8-9 creature on the field, really strong situation here. And also Tyvar in hand, which is also great. Uh, here I put a counter on the Catacombs, and plus uh, minus the Tyvar. I have the option in response to go for uh, the... 
uh, which cottage and trigger the roots decided not to do it but to save this uh, fetch maybe I think I think this was a mistake I should have gone I should have gone for the witch cottage immediately now they're untapped with a scavenging goose and they were completely tapped out so that was my opportunity to put a, a grist on top now I would have a grist in my hand instead of the grave crawler which would enable me to uh, play uh, the grist in the second main phase and kill their uh, Yagmoth which is just uncomparable to my position right now and uh, Grist, uh, at this moment Grist would um, kill the Yagmoth and probably just win me the game but uh, it was like definite misplay and this way I just played the Grave Crawler and my opponent finds uh, the combo kill on the next turn uh, by playing a Young Wolf and another Young Wolf and the Chord of Calling to go for the Blood Artist and they have the combo kill so that is the game, definite definite uh, misplay there uh, not putting Grist on top uh, at the right moment uh, just uh, passed the turn a little bit too quickly and uh, it was too late already okay so that is it, that is the entire league uh, only lost to Yagmoth when they really had uh, like uh, good hands, the Yagmoth is just incredibly strong hand a deck and I had the win in the game too but one misplay is usually enough to win games like this one uh, but uh, yeah, my uh, I played three leagues with this deck and each league I went 4-1 that's pretty good in my experience um, only lost to top decks in the format and also won against some top decks in the format uh, the build was like really really good I really liked how well it played out with the halfling and how well like the tiver and the grist on turn 2 uh, felt in a lot of games also like giving uncounterable of course to any creature uh, with Agatha Soul Cauldron it can be really powerful and that's it didn't miss Ballista uh, which I initially had in this build didn't really miss it and I think I would rather have Fulminator in the main than uh, Ballista right now so that's it, I really like this build, I think uh, it's powerful, it has legs and uh, it is going to benefit from a Modern Horizons 3 immensely the, the card White of the Reliquary is definitely uh, gonna be playable in this build uh, you just have to change stuff a bit uh, probably add a couple of sagas, something like that but it's really close to the final build which I'll be trying uh, when MH3 releases and very happy with this shell and the uh, performance of uh, cards with Souls of the Lost, Bristly Bill and uh, Insidious Roots with Bill especially like Maybe the Bristly Bill is a card to break the roots in the format. Maybe we're missing another piece. This deck is feel, already feels uh, very strong, but it's also going to become uh, 10 times better after the MH3. So this is also uh, two times so far. I've been working on making a Grave Crawler Tiver combo deck with the roots. And this is definitely by far the best Tyvar Grave Crawler Roots combo deck that I uh, made. Uh, been I had bunch of uh, builds uh, around trying testing, and this in this build like everything came to its place, and I'm very very happy how it performs. Souls of the Lost just another sick uh, threat in this deck, and also deck can play decently against Graver Hate. Um, so that's it. Okay. Uh, that's it all for today. Thank you for watching. Friendly reminder to click like, uh, click subscribe, comment in the video. Uh, I want to hear about your experience playing this deck, uh, your ideas, what else uh, would you uh, add some more Agatha Soul Cauldron to the main. I feel uh, so far I felt like just having uh, Grist and uh, Karen Feeder and Bristly Bill uh, plus Halfling has been more than enough. I didn't really feel like I need more. Uh, of course, uh, uh, after MH3, uh, there will be more cards with the abilities that will like go be great fit in this deck, and I'm really really excited to uh, brew with that in the future. And uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, again, 
thank you for watching that's it for today goodbye